Welcome, everyone, to That Kind of Nerds Podcast, a weekly show where we break down what is going on in the nerdy world. I am CJ Mellon, joined by Josh Burns and Brian Thornton. I'm here for two weeks in a row, though. What? What? You're here and you're moderating. My wife is just gone crazy and she's like, yeah, go ahead, record the podcast, whatever, that's fine. I was like, okay. Holy hell, what form did you need to fill out? I, I don't know. I put on Parks and Rec and then that was it. I just, I could just walk away from the room and because, time can pass. Because Parks and Rec makes people happy. <laughs> parks and Rec and a pint of Ben and Jerry's makes me good. Just the Parks and Rec, I think. Yeah, I think that's all I need. Makes needed. me happy. Makes me feel fine. Well, this podcast is, of course, ad free. Thanks to our supporters on Patreon. So please go out and support this show. Go to patreon.com slash that kind of nerd. You get all types of goodies and early access to our topic list. So please go check out patreon.com slash that kind of nerd. We need to start this week, though, with some follow up because Disney listened to our podcast and then ignored us like it just entirely ignored our suggestions they they didn't they didn't they didn't unless they have um recording devices devices everywhere which yes, it, they're they disney. might they might it's disney of course they do um we recorded on friday and they announced on saturday i'm just what saying their man. cast was for aladdin they they did they cast the 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 main characters for aladdin that they're having so such a hard time casting and I, i'm Okay, let's just start with the one that bothers me. That's Will Smith is the genie. Oh, indeed. oh, that doesn't bother me. Bothers me. Bothers me too. I I, I kind of like it. I think he'll do a good job. I don't know any of these other people. Naomi Scott is from Power Rangers. She is the Pink Ranger in Power Rangers, and I'm completely okay with her. Um, and then the the guy playing Aladdin, he's a, he's a newcomer. He's he's never really been in anything. Just probably for the best. And I keep forgetting that this is Guy Ritchie Guy doing Ritchie. this movie. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Completely forgot about that. That's cool, though. So very action-y. Okay. I, 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 you know, whether I see it or not, up in the air at this point, I need to see a trailer, and then we'll see. I like Naomi Scott from Power Rangers, though. She was she was pretty cool. I, I think she's going to bring some fun personality to, to Princess Jasmine. I'm just, I'm, I mean, Will Smith, I mean, he can sell me. It's just going to be, it's going to have to be a hard sell. So, I mean, like, you're really going to have to. Yeah, my suggestions pull. were better. <laughs> you, do you feel slighted? Are you upset that, that this happened? Look, I, I want to get. I just I got to tell you, I thought I thought they were spot on. I, I can't wait to get into cast this this week because I'm excited about it. <laughs> All, right. All right. So we also got some news in the movie in the world of television. And I want to start off with one that has to be God. Why? Why did you let this happen? Why? God, Why? M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong has confirmed that he is going to direct, I don't know if he's going to produce and write, but whatever, The Last Airbender 2, because we all know the first Airbender was so good at the first one the sequel. wasn't bad enough. We have to put M. Night Shyamalan in charge of the second one. I have questions besides what the fuck. <laughs> um... This is like a decade after the first yeah. Last Airbender, is it not? Yeah, and we all know how well movies turn out when you wait way too long to make a sequel. And the whole point of the the, the show, have you guys seen the Nickelodeon show? Good yeah. God, no. It's amazing. Oh, no, the, Josh, the, the, the show on Nickelodeon is really good. It's really, really good. And they're kids. They're like yeah, I get 15. It. Yeah, pass. And I just, so what? They have to recast their entire movie because they waited so long. That's a problem. And then, and then it's a problem that we decided to let Ma Knight, you know, go ahead and screw around in this sandbox again that he tore up the first time. What uh, the hell? Are you ready to, to, to kind of feel like the weird time continuum? It's actually only been seven. It's been 2010 since the last. It's era. almost a decade. Almost. It's All right. too long. I mean, by the time it, really, it doesn't it's, matter. It's, by the time it releases, it'll be ten years. It's dumb. Well, yeah, it's dumb. It's a, it's a horrible <sighs> idea. Just why? What, this what is did a we do? Awful, no good, very bad idea. What did we do to deserve this? Um, we bought Avatar and Legend of who, Horror DVDs. Who is that? What is that? What it is? is that what the I have no idea. Like, hey, listen, I mean, guys. that's what I did because I enjoyed the cartoons. Fuck this movie. <laughs> that's terrible. So let, let me do is this. That I have, I is that a hard pass? I don't give a shit, Brian. Hard pass? Is that a hard pass? I don't oh, give a shit. Hell yeah! How successful Split was. Fuck this movie. Is that a yes, hard pass? Josh, it is a hard pass. I don't know how hard it can get as far as hard <laughs> passes go. This is the hardest of passes. Well, right, listen, listen. If I got to tell you, if the hard pass stays that way for longer than four hours, seek medical attention. <laughs> 
Uh, no, this is a hardest passes. No, never. You couldn't pay me to see this movie. It's not going to happen. So let me let me give you something to, to to cleanse the palate. Let me give you a red band trailer for Kingsman: The Golden Circle, and you get more of the America side out of this, dude. This this looks phenomenal. This this trailer and both both of these trailers have done an awesome job with the music selection timing to the things happening in the trailer oh yeah it gets me so freaking jazzed i don't know what version of my generation that is but i have to find it because it's awesome it was a great trailer that i have nothing i have nothing bad to say about the trailer the cast is phenomenal what did julia Moore as a as a as a villain, as a villain. sign yep. me up <laughs> yeah i'm all for that so what we've just distinguished then is a, we set a pattern between a terrible movie and a fantastic movie, and uh, we found an article online that really can help you to how to spot a bad movie without even seeing it. And the rules, I think, are, are pretty apt, and it focuses... They're on, actually rules that I have followed. Yeah, and it, it really seems to be focused around the movie The House with Will Ferrell and Amy Poehler. Uh, yeah, well, I but mean... But the, the, the it article... works anywhere. Yeah, it works anywhere, but the article is, is more so about spotting a flop. I mean, because I've seen some flops that were pretty decent movies, but you can you can tell a movie is not going to do well in the theaters just based on some of these criteria, um, especially like uh, if it's under a 90 minute running time. That's something that I've always, always done. I worked with a guy. It's like at, a kid's at, movie at that point. Right. I worked with a guy at Blockbuster who refused to watch any movie under 90 minutes. And I, and I kind of adopted this after a while because it turned out to be right because he would be like, if if it's under 90 minutes, odds are it sucks. See, I've done I've done the one about embargoed reviews once I was cognizant of the fact that, you know, this is a thing uh, of going, oh, yeah, no, it's like it's not you can't see any reviews or it's not on the Internet. I mean, it's not in, well, at that time it wasn't even in the newspaper. Uh, so, yeah, no, we should probably not go see this because no one's allowed to talk about how bad it is. And that goes hand in hand with there's no little catchy little quotes on any of the posters and things like that, too. Do you remember a a few, actually, probably like last year, we talked about a movie that hid a one star review in their poster by very cleverly framing it in between a bunch of five stars and it looked like it was a five star review cut out by the characters, but it was a one star review movie. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, I mean, like, that's a great thing where you have to kind of watch it. And that's a little funny, but yeah, when you look at the posters, especially for the house, there's no comments. There's no, you'll laugh all day. There's no thing. And the other part too, is like when you see a trailer and the, the quotes that they have, when they attribute them are from like a website you've never heard of before. Or something that's completely like John's blog. Well, yeah, okay, probably <laughs> not a good movie. I'm not going to agree with John on this one. <laughs> it's, it's an Amy Poehler fan I'll be club this. in disguise. Uh, the other one too, which I, I I I never thought about, and and now it just seems so obvious, which is interviews about anything but the film. So like Will Ferrell and all these people talking about the Mariah Carey incident, and people just talking about you know, just things instead of going on to late night shows and like here's my clip, let me talk about the show, let me talk about the movie, here's the clip. Uh, people who just kind of want to dick around instead of actually you know promoting the movie should be a pretty pretty big red flag. I think I'll just I'll just accept the sub ninety minute running time rule. And I'll probably just stick with that because I don't, I don't read news stuff about production rumors. I don't watch late night shows where people go on and talk about anything but their movie. So like, I, none of this stuff is going to help me except for the sub ninety minute running time. I have a prediction. Oh, the last Airbender two is going to fit all of these criteria. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be 88 minutes. No one's going to be allowed to review it. <laughs> the, the the kids can't go on late night because it's too late for them. And so they won't be able to promote the movie. It's just going to be a travesty. It's going to fit all of these. <laughs> That's awesome. So talking about some movies, though, that, that are good, uh, we have found a list of 90s movies, 90s sci-fi movies that still hold up. And I'm very curious to get your reactions to some of these and see if this list is correct or if you had something that you needed to add to the list. Uh, and these are movies that I kind of agree with because I, I, I like a lot of them. The, the first one is obviously The Matrix from 1999. I mean, the first one is is a great movie. The rest don't, of them are. Don't, no, no, no. Don't shit. The, the whole 
The trilogy. The whole trilogy holds up. It holds up. It's a fantastic story. I have a hard time getting through three. Like, really hard time getting through three. Oh, no, no, no. You get through three just to, even just to get to the end fight scene. I mean, that's that's worth the, worth the two-hour admission alone. Yep. Huh. All right. The very Dragon Ball Z-esque fight scene between <laughs> the Smith and very Neo Dragon Ball Z. Awesome. I, I'm, I don't care. I'm never going to get to see that in a live action DBC that's movie. True. <laughs> yeah, so, so I might as well watch it here at That's the what I want to see. It was awesome. I, I agree. The next one is Terminator 2 Judgment Day from 1991. Just watched this not too long ago. Yeah. Freaking amazing movie. Uh, and stop, and, and just as a note to Hollywood, stop fucking with... Uh, Terminator. No, just give me all making... the Terminator. Just no. as many as many Transformers. Give me those th- that many Terminators. Really? They a, you watch? A, they won't. They won't stop because it's a huge franchise. I love regardless. the story. I don't care. B. This next one, James Cameron is coming back for. I heard. I give heard me. they're they're. I heard the the plan is reboot, restructure. James Cameron's back. Let's start all over again. Aw, oh, sorry, Matt Smith. You're no longer in that world. <sighs> you don't know that. Maybe they'll use some stuff from Genesis. Who knows? I hope that I I'm in the minority who liked Salvation. I enjoyed Genesis. I enjoyed Salvation too. I've I enjoyed, enjoyed Salvation. I've enjoyed every Terminator movie except for Rise of the Machines. Yes. That one was awful to the point where I got into an argument with my roommate over how awful it was and we actually watched it <laughs> just so I could prove a point. <laughs> so, <laughs> the score? Would, would you stop? Would you possibly be like this is a scene? Did you not here's see how thing. awesome that scene was? I own every Terminator movie except for Rise of the Machines. So we had to actually rent it on demand just so I could prove a point. <laughs> just so you That's can how petty I am. See how shitty that scene was? Wasn't They didn't awful? even have it in the Blockbuster at your house? It's not in the Blockbuster at my house. I have every one but Rise of the Machines. I think I borrowed it, and I'm really afraid of the late fee, so I'm not bringing it just, back. Just not happening. You, I, no, no, I'll pay you to keep it. <laughs> All right, the next one on the list is something that Brian and Josh have gushed over in other conversations. It is Jurassic Park from 1993. Yeah, yeah. totally, totally acceptable. Fantastic one. Bring it on. I think it. All right, bring uh, it on. Also, a 90s movie that holds up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's wow. been brought in. Wow, really? Yes. Yeah. I just, I, I just can't believe you went there. I'm just saying. He said it. I'm Josh, I feel like you have strong opinions about uh, 1995 release of 12 Monkeys. Uh, I, I got to tell you that I love Brad Pitt's character in this it's a, movie. It's a great freaking I, role. I actually uh, I, I, I grew up with a kid that kind of turned out a, a, like that batshit crazy. And that's about as batshit crazy as a whole lot of LSD can make you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like, I, I'm telling you, the, the the role is uncanny resemblance to a, an old old friend of mine. That's one of the reasons I love it so much. But this movie is, I mean, basically flawless. It was great start to finish. Mm-hmm. Brian, I love that movie. Yeah. Um, it, it took me because that movie came out in what ninety five. You said. Yep. Yeah. So I was a little young to understand it when I first saw it. I actually watched it again as a, a teenager and loved it. it was, it's a great movie. Yeah, it's one of those ones where you do have to watch it again when you're a little older and, you know, you can kind of make sense of it all. Yeah, if you if you are 10 or younger, you're like, what the hell is happening? Can I, just, I would, Can I just go over there and play? <laughs> I don't want to. Where are my dinosaurs? And I was promised monkeys. I need. There are no monkeys in this I film. need an adult <laughs> and 12 was, monkeys. Because in the same like time frame, Outbreak came out, and I was like, there's a monkey in there, and I was all about that, but 12 Monkeys doesn't have a single fucking monkey in Outbreak it. was great. Good Outbreak movie. is a great movie. Another 90s movie that holds up. You're welcome. Congo. All right, another the next monkey one is movie a, that holds up. The next one is a 1997 classic that pins the great John Travolta and the great Nicolas Cage together in one fantastic movie. It's Face Off. This is like the king of all B-movies. I love, I love this, this movie. movie so much. It's, it's, so it's up there. It's up there with Tango and Cash for me. <laughs> and also another amazing movie. But all yeah. I have to say about Face Off is that I could eat a peach for hours. <laughs> God damn it. That was my line. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. It's a movie that has 
the ability to make so many good gifts out of it, right? It it just has so many weird, random, overacting moments. It's a that great you, movie. For, you, you just stop, can't help stop but love making it. Making no. it turn out, just stop. No, stop making it like it's so bad. It's good. It's a good it is, movie. It's it is so a good. good movie. It's good. It is a good movie, and there are other you know decent actors in the movie. Uh, this list, I will say, so far, I'm very happy with. Keep going. Okay, so that takes us to uh, a movie that we, we talked about the other week, which is The Fifth Element. Say no more. Multipass. Love it. Amazing. Ruby Rod. Lilu Dallas Multipass. Multipass. She knows it's a multipass. Multipass. <laughs> are, are you a human? Negative. I am a meat popsicle. Oh, my oh, God. It's so, so good. good. Right? Uh, now, it's listen. so good. I, I read an article. It's like, don't really examine the plot of the movie just don't no, do that no it's sci-fi it's sci-fi it First happens off, the plot is decent on a cruise to flossed in paradise it's got chris rock or chris chris tucker with <laughs> and dude it, it's so you good to give it props for just this alone it is one of the very few movies i can think of where the main protagonist the main antagonist are never on screen together yes that's a, a feat in and of itself it's a great movie. Never share a scene. It is a great movie. The next one changed the way that you wear sunglasses forever. And if you had any kind of sibling, you definitely screwed with them with a neuralizer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 1997's Men in Black. Yeah. I got no problems with Men in Black. I still, when I go to Universal, still make sure that one of my stops is the Men in Black ride. Because um, I, I ride to. that ride on repeat. <laughs> this is one that I never saw. And you can yell at me and whatever you need to do because X Files. The, the wait, X-Files wait, wait, the, the f- one with the bees in the corn. Yes, Flight the one of, with the bees in the corn. Yes, what's that actually called? Fight of the fight what? for the future. Fight for the future from ninety nine. Yeah, fight the future. Fight, fight the, the future. future. Sorry, That's, sorry. Was one of my was one of my first DVDs. Love, love, love this movie. That comes in between like season five and six, doesn't it? Uh, that sounds right to me, but I don't know. It obviously was before Mulder left. So real quick, CJ, have you seen the X-Files television show? I have the whole way through. I don't know about. No, no, I have not. Wait, you mean not, not one episode? I've probably seen one or two episodes. And like And we have a new assignment for you, <laughs> CJ. Oh, <laughs> Lord, CJ. I have watched episodes one, or I'm sorry, seasons one through six twice. I want I, you to start with an episode called Home. I Oh, Home is so good. <laughs> I will not watch Post Molder. I refuse. That's kind of what the consensus I've heard of is. is just, it it's it wasn't Mulder that leaves, bad Post Molder. I but. refuse. It's not Molder. Is it Molder? Is that like the extra season Mulder. of Scrubs they're trying to say exists? No no no, 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 no. Because Robert Patrick isn't bad, but he's not. For me, I he's was so attached to Molder. I can't, I can't do it. This movie was really, really good. Whether or not you you know anything about X Files, this movie was really really good. Do you think it still holds up? Do you, is it something you can still watch now? Absolutely. And be yeah, it's a standalone movie. It was really good. Next, okay. the next movie is in from 1998, and it it really made us examine. 98 we, was quite a year. Something apparently. that we had to ask: Is it easier to train astronauts to be drillers, or if is you're it talking easier about to Armageddon, train drillers this movie holds to be up. astronauts? It's Armageddon. If you're t- yeah. great movie, it holds Love up. This movie. It holds up. It's easier to train drillers to be astronauts. Clearly, that's easier. And the other thing is, Harry can't lose. He doesn't know how. <laughs> Bro, I have said that line about a thousand times. Somebody's like, "What? Are, what are we gonna do?" I'm like, "I don't know," but I can't lose. I don't know how. And then you guys believed me. <laughs> I've said that to you, CJ. I I can believe that. We, Absolutely. We uh we we can't lose. We don't know how. And and <laughs> yep. you went, you okay. know what? You're right. You're right. We don't know how to lose. <laughs> that was really motivational, Josh. Josh was quoting Armageddon. I was quoting Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you I love the you have you seen the, the commentary of Ben Affleck from that from that movie? Where he's like, I asked. No, because we're not plebs who don't watch X Files and listen to commentary. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I, I there's a mo- there's they're, they're having the moment where uh, Liv Taylor goes, "Is this um? Do you think everyone's doing? Do you think anyone else in the world is doing this thing exactly right now?" 
And Ben Affleck over the over the commentary goes, "Fucking not happening anywhere else." I can guarantee that to you. <laughs> Just like bash, he's shitting on the movie the whole time. It's one of the greatest DVD commentary tracks that's ever existed. Okay, so let's go back to some fantastic movies. Uh, a 1999 uh, classic that I hold dear to my heart, which uh, follows a, a young man as he, he goes back into the wild, wild west. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Back to the Future Part 3. There's no way that was 1999. I'm oh, sorry, 1990. My bad. Well, that makes a lot 90. more sense. Uh, does it hold up? Does it hold up? Yeah. Every yes. single Back yes, to the Future Yes, as a love story and, and for no other reason than the Doc Brown and what's her name love story. Otherwise, I can do without Back to the Future 3. Really? I don't care. I don't care how yellow Marty is. <laughs> <laughs> if it weren't for that love story between Doc Brown and well, I don't even know her name anymore, but that that's the whole movie right there is Doc Brown deciding to stay with her in the past and live out the rest of his life and die. What about, no, but what about the train that turns into the DeLorean like time machine that flies away? No, it's a no. flying time nope. traveling train. I'm done with it. Nope. It was the Doc Brown story was the only thing holding me to that movie. So as a love story, it holds up. As a science fiction movie, you're saying it does not. I'm done with it. All right. Uh, I think Brian and I disagree with you. Wholeheartedly. Okay. Okay, so here's what I have never seen, so I, I have no judge of this, and that is Star Trek First Contact, oh, 1996. Oh, such a good movie. Mm, I have seen uh, a total of three Star Trek movies. And they're all the brand new ones. All right, I'll talk about this. <laughs> um, so, I mean, this was the first next gen truly just next generation movie, because he had generations before that, but it had all the original crew in it. And this movie was... Awesome. Any fan of Star Trek, this absolutely still holds up. It's it's kind of like the sci-fi horror mix because it's the, the Borg is in it and they're always really creepy to begin with. I actually just watched all the Star Trek movies recently. It, it's a great movie. It still holds up. Don't give me that look. No, just of course you recently watched all the Star Trek movies. So you had like a free 35 days of nothing. So you just like, yeah, let's do that. The Borg will assimilate is the only thing that I like. Is that a thing? It is. So resistance I get, is futile. I right. I get that. Uh, all your base are belong to me, kind of thing. But <laughs> <laughs> all your base are belong to us. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't get like this right. whole the, with the robot guy. I don't data I data. Don't, I don't understand him at all. Yeah, yeah, you do. I mean, no, I've never watched. I have never seen. Yeah, but you've seen that story a ton, ton, ton. Yeah, you, you, and others. Yeah. Well, he's the Tin Man, right? Yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, so I get it. He's the Tin Man. In this, in in this iteration, it just doesn't make sense to me. So I've never. I mean, I've never watched an episode of Star Trek or a movie before Chris Pine. So this next movie, the special effects may look a little dated, but nobody cares about that because there's something amazing in this movie. It's three boobs. It's Total Recall, total recall. from 1990. Yeah. yeah, Total Recall had three boobs. That's really that's really the most amazing Listen, thing in that movie. To it you. was 1990. OK, I was a, a, a younger kid coming into my own. Yes. Three boobs is all that mattered when I first saw this movie. Does it hold up as a concept? Yes. Uh, the movie itself. I didn't like the first time around. And I was I was like yeah. nine or ten when I saw it. I didn't like it. I like this movie for the first. And I like some of the effects because it's a little bit of practical. And that's a lot of fun to watch. The but, x-ray yeah. thing in the airport was cool. Or whatever that was. Not an airport. Train station. What was that? Train I, I, station? Yeah, I would say train station. Right. So the, the x-ray portion was, was cool. I remember that being cool. You know what I like about this movie? The game. The Nintendo game that came from this movie was oh, really? was very cool. Uh, does nobody remember this game? No, I've never, no I, I, didn't, I didn't play I this game. Did you the fight game, Stone the in it? The game was super entertaining. The game was very cool. I did not like the movie. The uh, the next movie is is something that I love a lot, but I don't think belongs on this list. And let me preface this by saying I love this movie. It's the 1991 The Rocketeer. I love this movie. This movie is great. When you watch this movie again, 
does not it hold absolutely up. absolutely does hold no, up. No, it does not. It most certainly The does. green screening in it is terrible. The The acting is atrocious. The only thing that's great is the helmet. This has nothing to do with special effects or acting. It's as a movie. No. Does it hold up? And it absolutely does. Does this not movie, hold up. It's a pain yes, to watch. It the is not The only thing that you like is the helmet. That's no, the I enjoy like. everything about this movie. Timothy Dalton, Jen- Jennifer Connelly. I mean, come on. It's a it's, bad here's, here's movie. Another one, here's another one I never saw. I'm going to punch you. You should watch what? The Rocketeer, Josh. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I mean, I knew you're not, but, you know. Okay. I have to ask you guys a question. Because right now, we are supposed to be in a dystopia 2017. Taco Bell should be the only survivor restaurant <laughs> of the franchise wars. Bro, Demolition is, Man is What is, is up with the three seashells? <laughs> Demolition Man from 1993. I will curse a bunch of times and get demerits and wipe my ass with the receipts. (laughs) But I'm not using the three seashells at all. I don't mind a rat burger. It's not bad. I will watch this movie all the time. Every single time it's on. I I don't I don't I won't flip. I won't flip past this like I will not flip past Goodfellas. I love this movie. I, I, I actually just watched it not too long ago. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say. No, I no, love this movie. Fantastic. Love this movie. Wesley Snipes is like the best in this movie. He's so good. All right. Uh, Dennis Leary makes a, an appearance in that movie, too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah he's, he's a pretty the leader big deal in that movie. Yeah, right. he's great. I had to remember. Oh, okay, you this, know Sandra Bullock. I, I don't know if... I, I, this, I've never heard of this next movie. It's called Strange Days from heard of Strange Days? I've never heard of Strange Days. I've it never was, seen Strange Days. I've was, heard of it. I mean... Uh, is it Ray Fiennes? Yeah, it was it was a a VR thing, but I remember it like sort of being more trippy than 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 sci. Like, uh, yes, it was sci fi, but it, there was this very much a trippy thing. I don't. Does it hold up only because VR is a thing now? Otherwise, not so much. I want you to place yourself back in 1996. If you were in Pennsylvania, there's probably some snow on the ground because you know. The blizzard in 96. The blizzard, yes, indeed. You're at the movie theater. You see Jack Nicholson, Glenn Close, Michael J. Fox, and a bunch of weird-looking creatures on the screen. This movie gave me nightmares. Mars Attacks. Mm. This yeah. movie terrified I me. I thought it was movie. dumb even then. I never yep, saw it. Me too. I hated this movie. I, I still, saw a trailer, and I went, this is dumb. I still quote this movie as one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Oh, wow, really? I do not like this movie. I did not like this movie either. No. So no, I don't think it holds. Doesn't up. hold up. Next, nah. all right. The next one is 1997 Contact. Oh uh, well, okay. So let me let me say two <laughs> things. First and Please. foremost, I believe that Jodie Foster might be my nemesis. <laughs> I think there's a possibility. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> I think okay. there's a very no, good now chance. Now you have to explain. I do. I think there's a very good chance that Jodie Foster and I uh, are destined to meet, shake hands, look at each other very closely, just like for for like for like a solid fifteen seconds, like that stare, like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about you. And then at the same time, at the same time, we both just say. Fuck you. Why? Because that's how I feel about Jodie Foster. And I think that she feels the same way about me. At least I'd like to think she feels so, the same so, way about me because I really hate pretty much everything she does all the time. Okay. So this, you hate this so, movie. Okay. Uh, Cause I hate this movie. Not only did I hate this movie. <laughs> here's here. Let me take it a step further. Okay. I yeah, hate this movie so much that my hatred was multiplied exponentially by Jody Foster forcing me to like Matthew McConaughey because Interstellar was basically this movie, but better. <laughs> <laughs> and she has one upped me in nemesisness by making Did me like, like someone Matthew I hate <laughs> because she's so fucking terrible at everything she does. <laughs> okay. That's where I'm at with this. Movie. I would ask you to, to to tell me how you really feel, but I think we've got I, it. I think move on is how I feel. Next movie. 1997. 
It's uh, obviously set in some space. We see a young Neil Patrick Harris before he really truly embraces the MPH persona. And we learn that bugs are fucking terrifying. Starship, it's Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers. Oh, I, I, I didn't know if we were I guessing never, based on your lame <laughs> segues. No. Lame segues? <laughs> this movie is listed as cult classic. So I do like segues this movie. Lame are, segues are, are one-person man vehicles that drive in circles only. Those are lame segues. <laughs> I love this movie. I love this movie. This you know great. why I love this movie? Not because of like the the bugs and and everything. Because of naked ladies. No, not not even the naked ladies. Not even that Aww. that co-ed shower scene. It's because NPH shows up for ten minutes at the beginning, then he goes fucks off for an hour and a half, and then comes back. He's like, "Hey guys, I, I found a way to fix everything." <laughs> You know, everything you've been doing for the past hour and a half, I just fixed it. Here you go. Null and void. It was awesome. <laughs> Before I am Groot, there was the Iron Giant from 1999. I find this movie so endearing. I'm convinced Vin Diesel got the role of Groot based on his performance in the Iron <laughs> Giant. Right, and I, I can believe it. I, I can believe it, too. This but, was a uh, great movie. I love, like, the animation from Warner Brothers, which, like, you know, kind of fell out a little bit because Disney and, and other, you know, studios took it over. But, man, it was great story. I cry every every time I watch this movie. Yeah, it's very, it's very emotional. But I, um, I do love this movie. Here's one that fans have been clamoring for for years for a sequel and actually was voted as one of the best Star Trek movies ever. Yes, you heard me right. It's 1999's Galaxy Quest. I'm not making up that fact that it got voted the best Star Trek movie ever. They were talking about doing a sequel, and then Alan Rickman died. Rickman died. died. So I'm not so I, sure I, you can, what's like, happening with that. Sam I, do, I love this movie. Sam Worthington making it. like a debut as like a side character where he's, he's really nobody. Tim Allen, right at the end of like the heyday. Well, you realize what this, they're trying to do this again, just differently. That shitty Seth MacFarlane show is supposed yes. to be this. Uh-huh. This is this was a great movie. Seth MacFarlane, shitty. Great movie, shitty television show coming out. Take that, Tony Shalhoub. But this was a this was I love this movie. Um, fucking Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell, yeah. I'm sorry, Be- I said Sam Worthington, didn't I? Sam Rockwell freaking out about knowing that he's like the ancillary character that he's supposed to die. He yep. like hitting all those Star Trek like cliches it was great it's so it's so enjoyable it's so funny it's a fantastic movie i, I, I like st- alan rickman I, uh, and and beyond that not a ton i didn't i didn't even like sigourney weaver and i generally love her everywhere but like uh, alan rickman tony shalhoub sam rockwell and all of them sort of n- certainly not the top of the marquee when this movie came out no it's and, definitely tim allen and they were they were the they were the best parts I still think that you could do a sequel to this movie tastefully without Rickman. I, I think you can do it. Now, here's my question. Is there any movie from the 90s sci-fi yes. related that is so not on this movie? I am so glad you asked that because I have one. Go ahead. You remember Virtuosity? Yes. With Denzel and Russell Crowe? Wow. That's yes. a great fucking movie. That's a deep cut, bro. <laughs> Love that movie. That's good. And that still holds up. Josh? Uh it's not anyone's favorite movie but i like it okay johnny mnemonic i was gonna i was actually going to say that as well so keanu reeves johnny mnemonic solid movie and it, again again we're talking about total b movie but like ice t dolph lundgren hank rollins right i mean it wasn't the most star-studded cast, but I thought it was a really solid movie. Before before you move past this, and only because it reminds me of the rest of the 90s movies, it was made in, I think, 2002, but I'm going to include it because I don't give a shit, Equilibrium. Yeah, that was two, like 2002, and that's a fantastic freaking But movie. similarly themed, and I don't, don't want to get into anything past 2000. I get it. We're in the 90s, but... I feel like that was a movie that came from that stock, so I'm I'm including it. I don't give a shit about the rules. I've tossed. What them about out. um Stargate? I never saw Stargate. You never saw Stargate? No, and I know it was uh, a thing. doing another one. I know it was a big thing, and it's like a big cult following. 
it was what like a ninety four movie and then and then a series that went from like ninety eight to two thousand eight or some shit. Yeah, they they did a bunch of. Uh, I, I'm not sure my timeline's right. It's just kind of how I feel about it. But it, it's, it, I think it was in there. You know that what would also hold up with the uh, dawn of, of VR and that kind of stuff. And I guarantee you, you guys probably haven't seen it, but I have, and I enjoyed it. You ever see the the Thirteenth Floor? Yes. Yeah, that would hold up. That would definitely hold up. It's yep. a great. It, it's a it's a sci fi murder mystery movie too. I really enjoyed that movie. That would hold up for sure. So while while we're while we're talking about movies and and talking about things that hold up, which I I think our our casting of Aladdin would hold up. Can we talk about casting something else? Is that possible? Can we absolutely? Can we cast this? Let's cast this. No, no, this is no. This. <laughs> oh my god! I went a little hard rock on that one. <laughs> unexpectedly <laughs> made me do a sp- like a spit take <laughs> with red wine. So let's cast HBO's Watchmen series. Our uh, cast of characters to uh, redo is Rorschach, Night Owl, Comedian, Dr. Manhattan, uh, New Silk Spectre, Old Silk Spectre, and uh, who are the other two? Ozymandias and Hollis Mason, who is the original Night Owl. Okay, so the, the now Josh has taken on it himself to always to have two cast lists. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to cast this every time with high budget and low budget, but with the caveat that I get to throw in one character that's both, like I did okay. with uh, Tiddlywinks Lincoln Logs last week. <laughs> it's been a big cover badge for those playing the home game. All right. And Brian is just going to try to cast the dream team. I'm going to try. I have a couple alternates. I'm okay. I'm I'll okay with talk. alternates. I'm okay with us doing this. This I'll way, have to yeah. talk through some of them, but mo- for the most part, I have like one for each person. All right, CJ, let's do it. So I, I do. I do want to put a, a, a preface to this before we start casting. Um, I love the original movie. Love it, and I, I think it was casted damn near perfect. I think perfect is a no, damn near per- perfect movie. There's mm-hmm. almost no way you can improve. And I'll tell you what, my my biggest problem, my biggest problem was Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yep, me too. I had a real hard time with the comedian because of Jeffrey Dean Morgan. But I went ahead and, and I topped. Since HBO is going to do this show and we're, we're going to have to deal with it, um, I, I think I put together a pretty decent cast. So let's hear your cast, starting with Rorschach. Of course you got to start with Rorschach. Okay, so I'll go first. Uh, for Rorschach, I chose James McAvoy. Ooh! I have to tell you that my f- very first pick was the low budget pick, which was not McAvoy. My high budget pick was James McAvoy, and then I erased it. Really? <laughs> we almost it was, agreed. Wow. It was James McAvoy, and and I and and my thing was, I, I tell you what sold me was the movie Split. Yeah, what, that's what, that's the mealy what I thought of. Right. So that's why I erased it. Because it was a recent thing. So I, I, I thought about someone who could be visceral, psychotic, intimidating, lucid, brilliant. And I went Ed Norton. You want to hear something funny? <laughs> yeah. I actually initially thought Ed Norton and switched it to James McAvoy. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> you two are meant for each other. All right, that's so Josh, is that your high, that's your high budget, right? That's my high budget. So who's your low budget Rorschach? Uh, this is actually, it was my first pick and it's the one that I would choose regardless of budget. It's Charlto Copley. He played, he played Murdoch in a team more importantly in, ah. in, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the American version of old, old boy. boy, Charlto Copley. That's a great movie. His, his role in old boy sold me on him being Rorschach. Long before I ever thought about casting Rorschach, Charlto Copley can be Rorschach. He's also from District 9. Good, good, good guy. I like that pick. So I, I'm yeah, good I like with high budget Ed Norton, low budget Charlto Copley. I, I, and again, initially I wrote in my notes James McAvoy and then I erased <laughs> it. So I'm, I, Brian, you and I are lockstep on this role. Okay, so, let's yeah. go to the next one of Night Owl. Night Owl, okay. Josh, we're starting with you. High than low budget. High budget Chris Pine. 
Really? Chris Pine. He's he's all American looking. He can pull off the nerdy thing, but he's a scrapper. He's like a sort of just a a, a, a fighting man. Okay. All right, right on. Who's your low budget? Uh Stephen Amell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, okay. right on. Okay, good, good. All right, I, Brian, let's hear your night owl. I actually have two for this one. I ha I have one and then I had a backup and I couldn't decide which one would be better. So Okay. Um I had either Ben Affleck. Because again, I mean, because he's yeah, based I, off Batman. Gotcha. No, not just because he's Batman, but you know, he's he's the same reasons that Josh said. You know, he right. he can pull off nerdy, he can pull off scrappy. Yep. I think he, he and Chris Pine a lot of parallels there. And, and I mean, we already know what he'll look like in old man makeup. So I mean, <laughs> right. we're good. My second choice was Bradley Cooper. Oh, that's very interesting. I like I think, that. I think he could do the same same type of role too. Okay, mm-hmm. so this this one seemed a little controversial for the original casting. So, Brian, let me hear your thoughts on who would be the comedian. <sighs> I had such a hard time with this one. I also have two choices for the comedian. Yep. So, uh, you tell me which one you think is better. My my initial reaction, I was thinking Josh Brolin, especially now that he's gotten a little cut and everything. You sure. can definitely pull off the action. Or John Berthenal. I like both of those. I went a very different direction, but I totally understand both your picks. I went uh high budget Liev Schreiber. Okay. Okay. I can do and that. And low budget, I went Ryan Hurst. Remind me who Ryan Hurst is. Opie, Sons of Anarchy. C- CJ, CJ. Yes. Okay, as listen. A, as a low budget pick, I got to think Ryan Hurst is Oh yeah, solid no, I think pick. you're right on. I think you're solid for him. I think he'd be great. But Brian's okay. Josh Brolin. Would I go be, Josh Brolin for the would yeah. be far better than Liev Schreiber, and yeah. I didn't even think of it. That's fantastic. Very All right. Good. The blue man who shows his penis way too much, Doctor Manhattan. Okay. I have a high budget, and low budget. Brian, what do you got? I uh, my guy is that actor that you know, but you don't know. You know, uh, I chose Doug Jones. And where do you know Doug Jones from? Doug Jones is very big on, you know, heavy makeup and uh, mocap and stuff like that. He is Abe Sapien in the Hellboy movies. He is in oh. a bunch of oh, Pan's Labyrinth. Okay. He is, uh, okay. he did the mocap for Silver Surfer in Rise of the Silver Surfer, but did not voice him. Right. Um, okay. I, I think he, I think he does that like distant alien uh, role extremely well. Okay, and you could buy him as a physicist beforehand, right? Absolutely, so, yeah, totally work. Okay, I went, I went high budget John Hamm Ooh. as Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, uh, and I went that way because I think he's a charismatic scientist prior to, and then sort of ability to do very cold after the transformation. And my my second pick was Tilda Swinton. <laughs> <laughs> it was not. It certainly was because I think uh, uh, there's actually nobody more terrifying as a <laughs> nuclear threat than Tilda Swinton. So I went Tilda Swinton. <laughs> and you saw her bald, right? In, right. In Doctor Strange. Already bald. She's already in my head. Uh, Tilda Swinton. <laughs> you just... remember, Brian, when I said very interesting, your pick for uh, as Brad- Bradley Cooper, your, your your pick there? Yeah, yeah. I went high budget. Uh, this is the character. Ozymandias, I couldn't do high budget, low budget. I okay. have two picks for Ozymandias. Okay. Um, my first pick, which I moved to second pick after further thought, was Bradley Cooper as Ozymandias. Okay. All right. Good work. And I, I settled that. on Ryan Gosling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. All right, Brian, I don't know. Pick? I I actually really like my pick for Ozymandias. Um, I picked Dominic Cooper, and you know him from you know him as Howard Stark from all the Captain America. Oh, stuff. he's the guy from Preacher. He's in Preacher. He's in Need for Speed. Uh, he, yeah, I disagree, but okay. Mm, I get it. You gotta watch Preacher to understand my my line of thinking. He does this very charismatic, very you know, very well, but he can flip it real quick. Okay. The new Silk Spectre. All right, so I have two choices for this one as well. Yep, Jesus. Too. All right, go ahead. All right, so um, I was initially, my gut reaction said Jennifer Lawrence. Yep. Are we agreed on that one? High budget Jennifer Lawrence. Absolutely. Awesome. 
Um, I also thought possibly Elizabeth Olsen. Uh, my second choice was Summer Glau. And you okay. know Summer Glau from Firefly? S- the Sarah Connor Chronicles. All right. And then who do you pick for the old Silk Spectre? High budget Charlize Theron, low budget Cameron Diaz. Oh, I, I like both those picks. I went with Amy Adams. I don't think she's old enough. Well, you would put some makeup on her, but I think she could pull it off. You know what's funny? You know what's funny? I swear to God. I said to Laura, we're what sitting at the table. We're discussing. Well, I'm, I'm sort of just talking to myself and she's sitting there drinking a glass of wine because this is my process. And I said, I said, you know who would be really good as like the old Silver Spectre was the mom from Spy Kids. You know who that is? Carla Gugino, who played the, Silk the Spectre. Silver Spectre. <laughs> yeah. For Christ's sake, my pick for Silver Spectre was Silver. And I went, well, that's not going to work at all, is it? And Josh, you gotta, if you look, if you look at like the old makeup done on like Mandy Moore and This Is Us, it, you could know, totally like transform. You, her. you gotta remember, you gotta remember. My my reasoning is that she's she's not old, but she's older than let's say Jennifer Lawrence is, right? And she's got to do, she's got to look young enough to be able to do some of those flashback scenes too. I think Amy Adams is the perfect age to be able to do old with some old woman makeup and still be able to do the flashbacks as well. I, I like Amy Adams. I think she's a fantastic actress. I think as a badass, both Charlize Theron and Cameron Diaz are better. It, it, I, I agree. And uh, let's go with Hollis Mason, who is the original Night Owl. Okay, so I have two for this one. <laughs> yep. Good man. Because the my first thought would be, wouldn't it be cool if we got Patrick Wilson to come back and be Hollis Mason this time, the original Night Owl, instead of being <laughs> Night Owl? Because okay. that was my that was That's my first. Pretty... And then I was like, okay, well, if I can't do that, Brian Cranston. Oh. <sighs> and I really like, like that. That's pick. like that's Gauntlet Throne. My my two are Clint Eastwood and Scott Glenn. And we know Scott Glenn from a ton of shit, including Training Day, among other things. But he's stick. He's stick in Daredevil. He's also stick in Daredevil. Um, but he's my low budget pick for Hollis Mason. I, I would take Brian Cranston over Clint Eastwood, but that was my I don't know why that was my first thought. It was just my first thought. Because he can tell a story. We're really well aligned on this one. Yeah. I like it. We actually were very much sort of e- even in the same wheelhouse. Yep. <laughs> um, and to the point where we had a couple of the same, the same picks. Uh, it was like two or three, which is actually uh, surprising considering we did this with no notice unbeknownst to each other and just <laughs> went for it. This is actually very solid. This would require several additional shots at the bar, Brian. Yes. Yes. We got to flesh this entire thing out. Yep. The last thing I want to talk about is two little topics about television. Uh, the first one is is uh, we are going to be covering uh, Game of Thrones Season 7 like we did uh, for Season 6. We're going to be releasing them as separate episodes. So you should see two episodes right now in that kind of nerd's feed. Again, if you haven't seen Season uh, uh, season 7 Episode 1, do not listen to that episode. It's filled with spoilers. So you have been warned and enjoy the Game of Thrones coverage. And Game of Thrones Season 7 premiere was so big, right? It was has such a high demand that it crashed the HBO website. How big website. was it? <laughs> <laughs> we get this all the time. We're cracking. <laughs> that's about it, man. Well, that's it. And that's the show. All right. <laughs> uh, oh, you never expect it. That was good. <laughs> just Thanks, Thera. That was solid. Uh, so it crashed HBO's website, which I have to ask: Did, did any of you guys have any issues streaming nope, the, the? No issues. I recorded uh, it, so I did didn't you? Need did to. you notice a large fire coming coming from from just east of you? If you didn't, there was no issues over here. <laughs> I would have I would have torched the neighborhood. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like I was, at, I launched Game of Thrones on HBO now at eight. 57 and it played and i was like wait a minute no it's real it's real it's real (laughs) it wasn't supposed to play till nine people who don't subscribe to hbo now didn't get it till nine it was streaming before nine i feel privileged (laughs) had there been any lag or any other issues i would have set fire to everything like i was a dragon my last thing is some uh, casting news that we got coming out of the world of Doctor Who, that we have our first female Doctor. It is Jodie Whittaker. 
Uh, she will be playing the 13th Doctor. Um, listen, I saw like a whole bunch of things about like, oh, the, the internet is outraged. The internet is outraged. I don't see any of the actual outrage. People are like, bring me these things. What do you guys think about the, the casting for Doctor Who? And will you ever watch this show again? Was there anyone that wasn't like, I don't know anyone that didn't celebrate. I, I know all the things that I saw, like people like getting Laura, into with other Laura, people. They brought him in. Laura called this. Uh, Did she? It, it wasn't recent. Like it wasn't last weekend. She she said, "I bet the next doctor is a woman." And I and I I I truly believe that the most dynamic character we've seen in a couple years has been Missy. So this makes sense to me, right? Yeah, and there was a lot of setup in the last season about this. Well, like they had- did not. It wasn't just that, right? It was it was the twins on Earth that are sort of manning the fort, right? As well as the advancement of whatever the hell her name is that's in charge of unit. Her as well, Kate, whatever sure. the hell her name is. But this this has been coming. Missy was a, a very very popular character. Mm-hmm. I, look. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mince words about it. I, this kind. Of, I was kind of lost after Matt Smith went away. So this is a, still a problem for me. I'm still not ready for another doctor not named Matt Smith. That's where I am. I can't move past. And, and I, I gotta tell you, after watching Bill, the previous companion, I cannot wait for the doctor to be a woman. I think. She, and this actress is amazing. She's she was in um uh Broadchurch. If if you haven't yeah, seen her, La- Laura watched Broadchurch. She recognized from Broadchurch the yep. character, the actress. Everything seems fine. My problem is it's not it's not Matt Smith. Not not Matt Smith. Now Brian, I know you've had the hardest time with Capaldi. Hard time doesn't really cover it. He hasn't watched it. I haven't watched it. Um, the only the only stir that I heard was I kind of wish they made it an even bigger deal. And I was like, okay, well, the episode needs to air yet, so maybe they will make it a really big deal. Listen, they're making a very big deal about this because the the spoilers and by spoilers I mean barely any. The doctor is rejecting this regeneration and the fact that he is. Go, like going through a cycle yeah, again. Yeah, he's being pissy pants again and saying, no, I don't want to go. No, no, no. It's it's not, I don't want to go. It's if it can't be me, it can't be anybody, and I don't want to live anymore. It's it's one of those things. I know. It's, I, like I saw I'm the past last my episode. Cycle. I get it. But I wish I wish he'd stop being such a, uh, like a, a baby back bitch is what I, <laughs> like I, I wish he'd just stop being a bitch. Ah, oh, well. He's not we, the doctor when he's being a bitch and he's being a bitch. <laughs> Be the doctor. Well, we are getting a wonderful Christmas episode that we're actually going to have Walder Frey. Yes, yes. Walder Frey is going to take the role of Patrick Naughton as the first doctor. That's wonderful. Fucking great. Don't be a baby back bitch. Be the doctor. Be the 11th. Be Matt Smith. Do it now. I'm excited. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to open up you know, new stories and new, new <laughs> stuff. But you watch it. But... In order to watch this, I would have to watch Capaldi's. And oh, I'm just so you're not going to watch it. No, listen, listen. Watch, it. watch. You don't have to watch all Capaldi. Just watch I, the last season I, no, of Capaldi. I, no, and it's no, and it's no, a great season. No, 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 no. no. You totally can CJ, because they phrase it as a jumping off point. The confessional was a billion years. You, you can't. Don't need to. You don't no. need to. You should, but you do not need stop, to. Stop. Just stop talking because if you know anything about me, you know I'm a completionist. You're a completionist. I get it. I will have to watch every episode. So don't sit there and give me this bullshit that I don't have to watch every episode. People who are trying to jump into jo- Doctor Who based off this announcement and people who want to start maybe get into the fandom based off of this can just watch the last season of Capaldi CJ. and get a huge amount of history put into CJ. one thing. It is a great jumping off point. They even called the first episode the pilot. Like CJ, you can totally watch it. No, it's you can do wrong. that. It's, it's not wrong. wrong. No, again, you this should watch wrong. all the other episodes, all the other previous seasons. But if you just want to jump in with Capaldi and watch that last season, you can do it. This is wrong. Like telling people to do it this way is doing it wrong. No, you can do that. You don't ru- advise it. You're you ruining can do it. it, though. Wait, let me just. You're ruining it. You're ruining it. You're ruining it. 
All right, so there's obviously so many opinions floating around the internet right now with so much is going on. Tell us if I'm completely out of my mind with this Doctor Who thing I'm talking about. Uh, and if you want us to cast a movie, recast it, send that to us at Twitter at that kind of nerd. Uh, find us on Facebook, or you can of course call our phone number four eight four three seven three four one one nine. You can leave your message, and we'll play it right here on the show. I want to thank Josh and Brian for joining me for this week, and it's so nice to see you guys. Hopefully, I'll be here again next week too. Uh, thank you so much for making us your walk around your neighborhood or your drive to work, and we will see you next week. If you love comics and sci-fi and technology, television, video games, and fantasy, we'll take a listen to our show, I'm sure you'll see. There's many points where we can agree. Like the Martha as a pop who was just too absurd. And Apple versus Android is a case to be heard. And my Josh says new Fantastic Four was a turd. Well, welcome to the club, because you are that kind of nerd. How's she still so hot is what I want to know. <laughs> I don't know. She just is. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> it's it's so stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb. It's so stupid. Oh, but it hit. It was right. It was perfect timing, perfect delivery. Yeah. 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 Ter- uh, I had a discussion with a, a, a line attendant about what the hell happened to fanny packs. Well, last time I was there, <laughs> literally fifteen minutes. We're like. They're so functional. Why aren't people wearing fanny packs? If you're anymore? in line for 15 minutes, I need you to pay for the fast pass. I wasn't. I was actually just waiting for my brother to put his shit in the lockers. And gotcha. I was like, well, you got all these lockers. What happened to fanny packs? Like, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got Josh all excited. This is my now favorite. He's... This is now my favorite shit, Brian. Yeah, I'm casting a movie here. The people are going to make or lose money based on my decisions. This has to happen the right way.